Welcome to a quick tutorial on how to draw the face using the Loomis method here with Miss Anderson. Okay, what you are seeing me do here is creating a box first that I can then chop off the edges of and kind of inscribe a circle inside of. That's how I know my circle is not super lopsided. So now that I have my circle, my blue pencil is going to stand in here for my 2H or my 4H pencil. I'm drawing with blue so that you can see what I'm doing. That inside circle takes up about three quarters of the larger circle. This is where we say they're more like guidelines anyways. It could be a little bit more than three quarters, maybe a little bit less. Sometimes you can look at the person and actually observe where the top of the hairline comes and that's where your inner circle will start. Now I'm gonna go ahead and divide both circles into half and I'm gonna do that going both ways. That top of the inner circle and the outer circle is going to end up being the hairline. The middle line is the brow line. So that hairline and brow line, the distance between the two are going to be important because that is going to also determine, I'm measuring the distance here, the distance between the brow and the nose and the distance between the nose and the chin. The distance between the hairline and the brow, the brow and the nose, and the nose and the chin are equal to each other. Now that other. I have these markers, I'm gonna go ahead and pull down the line that indicates the forehead down to the bottom of the chin. This has an incredibly different shape on different people. It can be straight or curved depending on the person that you were drawing. Since I'm drawing from a photo, I'm gonna go ahead and notice that hers is ever so slightly curved and her forehead actually flattens out a little bit at the top. The ear falls between the line of the brow and the nose. The jawline, what you'll do is you'll actually create a little bit more of that angle of the cranium. The jawline comes out from the ear and down to that bottom of the point that indicates the chin. I'm editing the hairline a little bit here to really resemble her actual forehead. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and draw the Loomis method onto her actual photo and see if it does match up. So there's that inner circle. The ear doesn't seem to be quite exactly in the little box that the Loomis method would have it, unless I actually make the circle a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna do that again. That's okay, because they're more like guidelines anyway. Once I fill in the rest of the Loomis method and looking at her hairline and doing those measurements, I do notice that it is spot on between the brow and the chin is equidistant, but the hairline is a little bit harder to discover, as is the ear. So that's why these are more like guidelines anyways. They are not going to be exactly the same on everyone. They're a rule of thumb that you can use to create a new person. So here I'm showing you the skull to show you that the circle is actually not a perfect circle either. And the cranium itself is a little bit bigger than a perfect circle. And that's what the skeleton says. Now it's time to put in more of the features. The eyes are going to live inside about the upper half between the brow and the nose. So where I drew this line for the eyes is about the center line of the eyes. I'm sketching in some of the top of the shoulders. That helps make it look like it's not a creepy severed head. I'm also going to sketch in right now the hairline, noticing that I am coming well above the line of the skull. The hair sits on top of the head particularly depending on your hair styles. About the same here with the mouth, that is contained in the top half from the bottom of the nose to the chin. You divide that in half, then you split that into thirds and you have the proportions of the mouth itself, meaning the upper lip and the lower lip. So you'd split it into half and then half again and that is gonna help you figure out where the center line of the mouth is close to. 
but again, we do want to use looking at our actual reference to really determine where everything is going to go. And that helps us also test the theory. Now we're ready to go ahead and start dropping in features. Practice a little bit with your features, use those powers of observation. We're more suggesting features in these profile studies here. So we are gonna move on to drawing a silhouette, but right now experiment with doing that close observation and outlining using that H pencil and then coming in with nice, clean, smooth lines to create your feature lines, adding some shading in as you see fit.